Neon no Security, Japan Security by Bright Chung, Danny Kang, and Tommy Kim. So ever since the end of the World War II, Japan ascended as a peace-loving nation. Japan found the government's responsibilities were to maintain peace and security in Japan. Despite the nation's efforts, the surrounding security environment became more severe. Japan, therefore, was determined to develop a government approach to foster a prosperous and peaceful society. So we first focused on what, what security is and how security is defined in the Japanese government. Uh, security is freedom from danger and risk. However, there are other nations that argue that Japan is not eligible to promote peace uh, with previous historical deeds. Japan cannot deny its previous uh, engagements in wars by imposing a threat towards the surrounding uh, countries. So Japanese definition of security was maintaining peace in, and security for their people in any kind of situation, whether the peace is threatened by other war or warfare or natural disasters. The government is devoted to prevent chaos and strife for security among the region and the world. So our next slide is about Japan's national security strategy. Uh, in order to overcome the shortage of national and global security, the modern government developed a national approach to promote peace in the global community. So the most important part in Japan's national security is Japan Article 9, or somewhat called Peace Constitution. After Japan lost in World War II, they were forced to sign a treaty that limited their power and security. <clears throat> Japan had a critical moment in uh, Japan. Article 9 prevented Japanese to maintain an army in any type of army, and that they can't wage war against another country for permanently. So history of Japan's security policy. So in 1946, Japan lost, to war, lost World War II and Article 9 was made by Americans. But right after 1950, right after the Korean War ended, Japan established a police force to prevent any distribution that happened like in Korean War. But in 1954, Japan changed its police force to name Japan's self-defense force called JTAI, whose purpose was the same. But however, in 1990s, they they and they enabled the increase of jet type forces and perform individual self defense, which is that if they are attacked, they can wage war against the country that attacked them. So the recent in September 1915, the Shinzo Abe. Uh, Shinzo Abe issued a new security policy bill which enables the, have Japan to perform collective self-defense, which means that they can wage war, not wage war, but they can support its allies' war by sending troops, and that they can send out troops to outward, outward except not only in Japan. Uh, still, Japanese couldn't wage war, but the bill allowed Japan to participate in war and other international disputes. So previously, Japan was only allowed to engage in wars when the nation was attacked. However, uh, Shinzo Abe thought, uh, thought that this limitation limit, limited the nation's ability to protect its citizens and international peace. Uh, therefore, the United States and Australia agreed to Japanese government's urge to allow Japan to become a peacekeeping nation within the Northeast Asian region. Uh, this would allow Japan to restrict communist growth from China, as well as to prevent bloodshed in the Korean Peninsula. So the consequences of issuing this bill was that Shinzo Abe was supported by some, but it was disliked by most countries in Asia, including China and Korea, and the people in Japan was like hating it. As you can see in the picture, Japanese citizens are still protesting against the bill saying that Shinzo Abe is a dictator. And this bill deepened the hatred between the countries like China and Korea. So our future outcome was divided into two parts. What if the bill continues and what if the bill is modified? So if the bill is continued to work, then the 
Xinjiang Abbey's government will be able to send out troops to our, like, outward international warfare, naming them peacekeeping and supporting allies. However, this will further increase the dispute between Japan and other Asian countries and increase tension in Asia. And if the collective self-defense is modified, the dispute will be lessened and Japanese won't be able to deploy its troops outside of Japan. So a possible solution for Japan was that Japan will be able to get, get approval or ask support by other countries to deploy its troops. So unless they get approval from the countries that they want to send out troops, they won't be able to send out troops. Before, there are no regulations, so Japan could send out any troop without getting approval. And also, we thought that limiting the number of deployable troops is a good idea because beforehand there were no regulations, so they can send out any number of troops, and that will be unorganizable and that it won't be able to control. So a possible solution internationally was that as other countries in Asia also had this Self, the collective self-defense. So countries in Asia should gather around to clearly define what is collective self-defense, which enables them to join war with allies and establish regulation in performing collective self-defense, like limiting the number of soldiers and also like when they can send it out and when they shouldn't do use this collective self-defense and clearly mark each nation's territory so there won't be further dispute over land. And, and uh, thank the end. Thank you.